how the fuck do I talk so much? Oh, I must be lonely or something. You're like, <clears throat> and then, and <clears throat> warning. You're watching Dr. Todd Lee TV, where theoretically you could learn a bunch of cool shit. I have a treat for you. I'm going to go over the most recent studies. They're meta-analysis of studies. They're not actual studies, but they've taken together up to 200, maybe even more. It's a little confusing because I watched so many videos on this subject. It's all blended together, but I got one really good graphic that I'll walk you through this graphic, and it's compiled from 200 or 240 studies. They took all the data from these studies and mixed it together to solve the debate once and for all, what's better, reps or reserve, or training to failure some of you may not know what the fuck this is even about training to failure means different things to different people because they have a different idea of what failure means the true definition of failure and the definition of failure that scientists use is the muscle you're trying to train fails to complete a complete rep so like if someone's going like this like a lot of assholes lift Every rep's a failed rep. That the, the weight was too heavy from the very first fucking rep. Training to failure or training beyond failure, like Menser or Darian Yates taught, makes you sick because it wears you down. It's really high in fatigue. That the amount of fatigue that is accumulated with those last couple reps is much higher than the whole previous set. And this is from personal experience too, is like for 30 years I trained to failure and the last maybe one and a half months I've been training with reps in the tank and I'm able to squeeze out multiple sets with the same load. This graph right here will show otherwise. Now, if you look right here, this is reps in reserve as it goes zero reps in reserve, one rep in reserve, two reps in reserve, three reps in reserve, four reps in reserve, five reps in reserve, six reps in reserve. But if you notice between here and here, there's not a big difference between two reps in reserve. So five reps in reserve, you could crank out four, five, six sets and still get 12 reps, 12 reps, 12 reps, 12 reps. So five times 0.3 is 15 or 1.5. So you sum these up that the studies have shown beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's not intensity that generates muscle size, it's volume. It's measured in sets, but the only sets that count are taken close to failure. So if, if this is five reps in reserve and this is six reps in reserve, there's a huge steep drop off of 0.1. So it, it's basically you're losing 33% to go six reps in reserve. And then this is low velocity loss. So the reps are going like one, two, three, four, five. Once you hit that slow as fuck rep, you're right here. This is where, if you look at the little man that's holding his head and saying, oi, oi, that this is where the neurological fatigue kicks in. Once you get to this point where you feel like shit, the nervous system can't contract as hard for subsequent sets. So if this is your second or first set in the day and you've got three body parts and each body part is six sets, which sounds low volume, but if you're hitting that everything three times a week, that's not low volume. That's 18 sets a week. That's very, very good volume. So you're going to fuck up the other 15 sets of the day. All right, now here, I want you to look at how similar these graphs are. Right here, this is six. This is six. That's type one fibers. Still getting some growth. This is five. This is five IR. So at five RIR, you're in the ascension range of the two A fibers, the intermediate fibers, okay? And then right here at four RIR, you're at the branch point. You've capped out on the maximum stimulation of the two A fibers, and you're starting to activate the two AX fibers. Bring it together here. That means that if you're getting stressed out neurologically, it's because you've activated the two X fibers. If you're getting stressed out neurologically, you're also going into high velocity loss. So in other words, once the two X fibers are kicking in, once the concentric phase isn't powerful, it isn't explosive, it's like, eh, or you're shaking as you do it. That means that you've activated this fiber type. This is all that's left, but you basically just scratch the surface with them with two RAR, and then you've maxed out their effectiveness with one RAR. Notice there is no advantage on this graph from being here at the one RIR point and being here at 
at the zero RAR point. You get no additional muscle stimulation whatsoever. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Fusion Regenerative Therapies, where I am the Director of Human Performance. This is the practice in which I practice medicine. Uh, we'll be able to order you blood work and read your blood work and help you with therapy as needed based upon the results of your blood work. Please click the link to get a consult with me and I can help you optimize your performance. Thank you. This is electromyogram. What does that mean? They hook some shit up to your body and it detects electricity. So if you use 30% of your one RM max, so let's say your max bench press is 300 pounds. So 30% of 300 pounds is 90 pounds. And I mean, it goes like 50 reps. You're still getting muscle stimulation at the 50 rep points. You could be doing 40 fucking reps. You'd think that you're not gonna grow any muscle, but clearly you are gonna grow muscle. So you gain the most muscle right here between five and three RAR. At least you get the most neuromuscular activity right here. As long as you get within, about here, that five to three RAR range, you're gonna get maximum muscle stimulation. You don't need to stop early, but if you do stop early, look, you're still gonna get some growth. But, and if you take it beyond three RAR, if you just have no gauge and you're like, you're still getting to failure is still better than stopping seven reps short of failure. It's just not as good as stopping in this range. So five to three is the best long, big picture. For that individual set, no. For that individual set, if you're Mike Menser or Dorian Yates, yes, getting as many reps as possible. Do you remember Princess Bride? When he's like, to the death? It's like, no, to the pain. It's like, basically, I like to think of it as being RIR1 is to the pain. You get velocity slows down. You want to be dead. So if you like this, click like, subscribe share all that shit let me know in the comment section if you disagree like i don't want you guys to have some big ass gnarly fight in the comment section over this anyway have a good night poodles thanks for watching this video if you liked it there is a full length version available if you didn't like it you're in our word this is just the summary just the tip if you will this is the tip of the iceberg of knowledge that i have bestowed upon you please accept and absorb the rest of this iceberg now a lot of people are selling this stuff. They are selling courses on the material. This is free. You don't have to pay if you click the link. It's not a funnel that you're not gonna get duped into giving your credit card or your email. You just get to watch the video. If you like the video, watch the whole series, watch it in order, the how to grow. There's numbers for a reason. Hopefully you completed preschool and you can count. So you watch them in order for a reason. That's why they're filmed in that reason, in that order, because they go from most important to least important. And as you suspected, the PED videos at the end, I guarantee you the answer to your problems is not more steroids. It's better lifting. If it's missing, it's probably because you're watching a censorship platform, switch to one of the uncensored platforms to see the PED video, I believe it's video five and I believe it's video 10 are not in the censored platform. So you are in a censored environment if you're missing those. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to get a consult by clicking the link in the description box.